For those who don't know, my name is Brian Wang. Let's answer a question. I'm on the Facebook page called Subtle Asian Pew Pew. Daniel in the Wind says, practicing house maneuvering with my rifle and I'm trying to figure out how to peek out of a left corner, peek out at a left corner or a doorway from the right side. I'm right-handed. Do you guys switch hands? Stand three quarter of the way out in a standard stance or both feet behind the cover, right-handed and just peek your torso out, shoot at a tilted angle using a red dot on a three eighths mount. All right, so let's address the question one more time. Daniel says, do you guys switch hands, stand three quarters out, like expose yourself out of the, the doorway or corner, or <clears throat> do you use both feet behind uh, the cover and then just kind of like lean out and, and get all awkward? So <clears throat> he's talking, of course, of addressing a corner from the weak side. So most of you guys are right-handed, uh, particularly men, or most of our guys are right eye dominant, so you're gonna use your rifle with your right hand. That means that when you're coming across a corner to the left, so rounding a corner to the left, this is your strong side and you have good access to cover and um, uh, you know, visibility over your sights and then you can use the rifle uh, with your strong side. When you come out the other side, this side is weak because it's awkward, you're, you're twisted up, you're like this. So I'm gonna address this question uh, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, give you guys a couple of different techniques that you can go home and practice. <clears throat> I'll show you how you practice that. So. Um, the, the issue at hand here is very well um, demonstrated in a video. You can find it, it's brand new, it's just a couple days ago, August 31st. Uh, go on liveleak.com, you're gonna search body cam, Daytona, police, uh, Daytona Beach officer involved shooting when an officer has got his rifle and he's basically coming through this doorway down a you know, corridor in someone's house and subject barricades himself in a back room and he shoots at the officer, officer takes around to the chest. And uh, that'll really tell you uh, the problem with being exposed when you're working in an uh, urban environment at close range and you're using a two-handed weapon because you can't really just fit around a corner around that side. So uh, fortunately for that officer, his armor caught the pistol bullet and he was fine, but he was very scared and very angry for quite some time. So um, let's, let's get into it. You have a couple of different um, techniques. I'll show them to you in the open and then we'll go to a corner, I'll show you again. Here we have a rifle. The rifle is equipped with a chamber safety flag. There you are, chamber safety flag. Cool, so techniques look like this. Right hand, no problem. Left hand, no problem. Right hand, left hand. Notice the change in footwork. Right hand, left hand. Right hand, left hand. So watch the hand movements. Bump shoulders first. Hand to the front, so both hands are on the front now, and then on the controls. Bump shoulders, hand to the front, and then move your hand to the rear. So you need to practice working the safety on both sides, left-handed and right-handed. Okay, so that's for the hand work. Now let's look at the footwork. So if you look down at my feet, excellent uh, view of my, my messy house, okay? So if you look at my feet right now, so right-handed, uh, for typically we're gonna be left foot forward and right-handed, right? But for CQB environments, you're gonna learn to use a technique we call fighting foot forward. And again, I learned this from a, a gentleman named Jeremy Hazenkamp, uh, who was Oregon State Police for a long time, a lot of years, right? So um, good dude, uh, very, very good instructor. He goes by the Instagram handle of uh, UTM West now. So anyways, good dude, hit him up. Um, so fighting foot forward, or left side, fighting foot forward. Right side, and left side, fighting foot forward. So with the hand technique and the foot technique, that'll solve a lot of your problems. Uh, so you've got the techniques that you can work on now, but um, how do you employ them? In other words, uh, what's the problem with it? Let's go to the corner and I'll show you. All right, welcome to Casa de Brian. Let's look at this corner here. <clears throat> right hand corner, strong side corner, not a problem. You come across this corner, right hand, minimal exposure. You got your muzzle, you got your light, and you got your sight picture and your dominant sights. Everything is tucked in tight. Your elbow is tucked in tight. Your hand is above your foot. Your elbow is above your knee. Your head is behind the rifle, nice and tight. Low ready position up, and you can work the full controls like normal. This is what we call a strong side corner, so no problem. Now let's look at a weak side corner. From the weak side corner, in order to address this corner, I would have to come out and expose myself. Look how exposed I am. In order to get sights on you, 
First of all, my rifle was tilted and I don't have a good sight picture. Second of all, look at all this exposure, all this vitals, heart, lungs, spine, head, neck, shoulder, armpit, all this exposed leg into the groin is all exposed from the corner from the angle of the camera, all right? Do we see this now? Problem solved by changing my footwork. I'm sorry, leaving my footwork, I'm sorry. Fighting foot forward, left foot forward right now. But by changing my hands, I went from exposure that was this much to this much, okay? So in other words, all that was was simply taking the rifle, bumping shoulders, shouldering on the left side, left eye, now change your hands, and then that's it, okay? So let's see that again. Changing shoulders, so you're gonna push out, come across your body, pull in, and then hand forward, hand back. Push across, hand forward, hand back. Push across, hand forward, hand back. That takes practice, that takes a lot of practice. Now, a couple things. With a red dot, you can easily, uh, more easily use your non-dominant eye, but with iron sights, you're gonna have to practice, 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 practice. So, um, a good friend of mine, Mark, Mark Swall, what's up? Hey, bro, it's a long time, I know. Um, <clears throat> but Mark made a comment down below and he says, well, you know, uh, he's heard that uh, from different subject matter experts that bumping shoulders or changing shoulders is, or switch hitting is a um, has got a lot of problems with that technique. And that's true. The main problem with it is that it takes a lot of training time. The second problem is that you have vulnerability. During that moment where you're switching hands, you're vulnerable. So is it a problem? Yes. Can it be mitigated through training? Both can be mitigated through training. But again, the, the assumption is a little bit different. In the military context or special operations or offensive movements, you are trying to assault a room. You want to take this room, you want to take this corner, you want to take this building. What do you, what do you not have? You don't have time and uh, you're willing to sacrifice men, right? So you're willing to trade men to take a building or take a room. Now let's look at it from the civilian self-defense standpoint. I'm not willing to sacrifice my life to take a room. I really don't care about the room. I want my life. I want the lives of other people. So life is important. I'm not willing to trade life to gain territory, which is a fundamental difference between offensive military operations, such as uh, direct action, special operations type stuff, and um, uh, versus civilian self-defense. So the next issue is that I have all the time in the world. I'm willing to wait, I'm willing to take my time. Um, and that comes from an assumption that in the civilian world, threats are usually fairly, uh, Concise. In other words, there's a bad guy and then there's no bad guy and then that's it. In the military context, there's bad guys and more bad guys and more bad guys and more bad guys and they're in front of us, they're behind us, to the left, to the right. We don't know exactly where they are. We don't know when they come. So there's a lot of pressure that you need to maybe going into the dangerous room is the safest thing to do. You just got to crash in there and go. When we look at the civilian context, usually uh, we can take an assumption that if there's a bad guy and there's a threat, it's a known direction of threat and you don't have threats behind you, for example, that are pressuring you that you must force your way through. Then another assumption is that if we're working alone, we don't have people that are behind us that are trying to get through this fatal funnel to assault a room. And if it's, we're working solo, and again, this is an assumption because typically in the civilian world, if you're by yourself, you're by yourself. Even if we look at that Daytona officer involved shooting, he had a partner with him. But the thing is, it was just him and the bad guy in that hallway and a bystander too. But him, his rifle, and the bad guy and a bystander in that hallway. So there really wasn't much help that his buddy was able to offer. Like his buddy was there, but his buddy was behind him and he might as well have been a million miles away. All right. So if we take on some assumptions about defensive nature of civilian gunfighting, you're isolated, you're by yourself, you have time, you're not willing to give up your life to gain the space that you're about to assault. And we can, uh, we can spend a lot of time in training and we can overcome uh, weaknesses of shoulder bumping being vulnerable by learning to be fast through practice, right? So in other words, the time uh, you lose is this much time, right? From left shoulder to right shoulder, Le right shoulder to left shoulder. Left shoulder to right shoulder, right shoulder to left shoulder. You do lose some time. But now let's see how much exposure that is. You're changing exposure from this much exposure to this much exposure. Uh, you're looking at exposure from vital center chest, heart, lung, spine, aorta, etc., to really just shoulder, arm, elbow, side of your skull. Um, all are naturally protective, naturally shielding. So um, there's a couple other things that you can look at. One, which is... Uh, to just flow through the room and then angle over. What you can't see is I'm on my toe, I'm on my tippy toe. And so if you're on your toe, you're not stable. And if you get hit, when you're leaned over like that, where are you gonna fall? You can fall inwards. Now we counter that through using the footwork. Now, if you look at earlier in my footwork, normally a right-handed shooter is gonna be right foot forward. I'm sorry, left foot forward, right foot back. 
And in this case, this is fine because I want my hips facing to the wall. I want my, my, my fighting foot forward. So if I'm going to be um, coming across this corner, which is a, uh, from, from my, you know, what do we call it? A weak side corner for me, but um, for you would be as a right hand shooter to the right, a corner around to the right. You want your left foot forward, your hips facing to the wall. On the other hand, if I'm coming across this corner, you see the problem, how exposed I am, my groin, my femoral artery, all this is exposed, my vitals are exposed. I don't want to be exposing my leg. So when I'm coming around a strong side corner, I want to tuck that leg in against the wall, fighting foot forward. So in other words, by using some footwork, you can solve the exposure problem on your strong side. And by you, by learning to switch uh, on your weak side, you can, uh, or your other strong side, you can solve the weak side corner exposure problem. And again, a couple things you need to practice. You will need to practice working the safety. You will need to practice working your sight picture. You'll need to practice operating your white light. I think white light is very important, but understand that from a CQB environment, particularly for um, a lot of suburban style houses or urban style homes, they're not very big and any engagement distance you find, if you have a light and you can put the light directly on someone, you're doing pretty good and you probably don't have to invest as much time into a proper sight picture. Um, so in other words, the sight picture is less important other than uh, co compared to good body posture, compared to good uh, ergonomics and good uh, use of cover. Remember, inside here you have pretty much two two by fours, and that's about all the cover that you have. But compared to having nothing, it's way better. Plus, concealment is typically as good as cover because people don't shoot very well as a general rule. People don't shoot through walls very well because they can't see you, they can't aim. Uh, so as a general policy, um, combined with speed and violence of action, um, using the concealment and cover to your advantage, you can train yourself to switch sides. You can train yourself to move around this corner fluidly. So I'll demonstrate one more time. Strong side corner, fighting foot forward, right? I can maintain my exposure, controlling that exposure, and I can pie this corner, right? And then uh, weak side corner by changing hands. So let me show you that. Push forward, cross, pull in, change your hands. What if you don't have enough time and you know your bad guy is really close and you don't have time to completely switch over? You can do this, what we call bumping, and just go with it. And just go with it. You can even press the trigger. Just everything's on the wrong side. Everything's weird, but it does work. So this is called shoulder bumping, right? Um, anyways, let me show you weak side again one more time. So I'm going to bump shoulders, both sides. So left hand on the controls, come out, activate light, good, back in. I can modulate and control how much I can see and I can control how much I expose myself. Any questions? My name is Brian Wang. The company's called Monarch Defense. You can find more information on monarchdefense.org and I'll talk to you later.